Hello everyone, this is Ty Warner with KISSOFT and I want to talk today about alternate bending factor versus load spectrum. So this is kind of uh, example two or part two of our load spectrum uh, videos here this week and of interest is alternate bending factor versus load spectrum. So you can you can calculate the bending factor um, of a gear that's loaded in both the on the working flank and non-working flank or you can set it up as a load spectrum. So here's a task, right? We have this example, you can find this in your examples, gear cylinder, uh, cylindrical gear pair one, and uh, make sure the power is 150, the surface height of 1000, the application factor one. And what we're looking at right now is uh, torque on the right flank and 80% torque on the left flank. So initially what we can do is look at the bending factor, uh, from our factor page and um, see how that compares uh, our radian life. Now we assume that this makes it to our um, you know, full 10,000 hours. So let's go ahead and we open up this um, example. We go to our radian tab, we change this to 150, we change this to 10,000 uh, for the required service life and we change the application factor to 1. Now, we, we are considering the load spectra right here, and right now we just have a power factor of 1, so we assume the torque is, uh, let's change this over to newton meters, 30, almost uh, 3250 newton meters, but we want to look at the alternating bending. So here we go, where did the 0.7 came from that we referenced earlier? Well, it's right here. We use 0.7 then to uh, devalue this based on uh, positive negative load um, alternating load. So we can put this value in. And the way we do that is we go to our factors tab, we go to own input 0 0.7 and 0 0.7. And um, of course you can always hit this box and hit F1 if you want to see what this is all about. It comes up with the alternating bending factor, um, you know, information here, etc. So we've, we've defined this now, and our initial design was 1.68, 1.623. We know based on the size of the module, because it's greater than 2 millimeters, we have a, um, a safety factor rating of 1.4 on the root and 1.0 on the flank. So the root safety is a little bit high. But since we've changed that um, factor now to 0.7 and 0.7, we go back and calculate our safeties, and now, oh my gosh, look at this, we're actually below 1.4. Um, the flank safeties didn't change much, but the root safeties did, okay? So, um, we see a big change there by adding the alternate bending factor from 1 to 0.7. What else could we do? Well, we can go back to our factors, and we can change this over to calculation according to ISO 6336. And what this does, then it adds our working flank and our non-working flank loading um, percentages. And remember, in the beginning, we were given 100% on the working flank, the right flank, and 80% on the left flank. Well, that's going to be the same for both gear one and gear two. Okay? And this is the uh, power factor, the speed factor. If we want to look at torque, we can change this over to torque. And um, it's using this torque here at 3250. So now we can calculate this, and we see it's 1.252 and 1.234. We have uh, safety for our flanks. Are, didn't change much. Didn't change at all. And now um, maybe this is, boy, it seems like it's not uh, going to meet our design, but maybe we're going to refine this a little bit further. And let's add another bin. Okay, and we know that uh, it's, a, it's a sinusoidal load factor, so 50% of the time we're going to be at a torque factor of 1, and 50% of the time we're going to be at a torque factor of negative 0.8. Why is that important? Well, we're still driving in the same direction, right? Remember, we aren't changing the direction of travel, we're just changing the load factor. So 
this is a working flank, this is a non-working flank. And if part if you looked at part one, you'll know that a a negative torque and a positive speed loads the non-working flank. And that's what we're doing right now is we're loading the non-working flank. So we're going to go ahead and calculate this now. Let's move this up. We get a couple, not really warnings, but we see we don't get any kind of changes here. 252, uh, bumped a little bit, 1.269 of 1.252. Um, so the question here is, is this treating this as a positive or a negative? Well, let's look at what a positive would be. Just change that to a positive, so now we're always loading that uh, regular flank. Okay. And what do we get? Uh, the numbers don't change. So it's treating it as a positive. So it's taking the negative load bins, this negative, negative 0.8, and it's applying it to the positive as a positive load. So what we need to do then is consider uh, potentially changing a couple things. It's considering bins as positive so we can look at uh, a more realistic case and an unfavorable case for the tooth flank. And when we make this calculation, now we still have very little change, no change as a matter of fact. Okay, so let's go back here. I think that should have updated. Huh, there's an update. Oh, I looked at favorable here. Interesting. Oh, I didn't change this. That's why. Jeez, losing my mind. Let's run this again. Hey, now we got, well, we don't get any changes. It's positive. So if we go back up here and uh, look at the more realistic case, I run it. No change. So what we're seeing is that uh, between positive and minus, we, we got no change across here, and it's basically calculating this the same as uh, if we had 100% load factor but as previous. So what we want to do then is go back and look at a predefined right here, and we want to check the uh, Safety again, but now if you go to rating, you can see things are different, right? We have a load profile of where we're um, applying the full load to each tooth. If we calculate this, one point four seven nine one point. So this is where we want to be. But remember, had we done a consider all negative loads as positive. be 1.703, which is a lot higher than what we expect. So we want to always look at um, tooth root and load spectrum as a realistic case. And we probably want to look at the, um, the flank load spectrum, um, document the unfavorable case. So then when we run this, 1.1, 1.4. So what you can see is we get a, a result closer to the case treating the negative torques to positive. This is because the worst case often gives too pessimistic, so it's too conservative result, and thus we name the setting as more realistic. What it means is um, we want to consider the negative load spectrum bins as uh, the most, um, we want to consider the most realistic case. So in this case, when we do this, our, our root safeties are 1.47 and 1.1. So 
So if you run the report on the calculation at this point, you can see down here in section three, uh, under tooth root strength, we have a required safety of 1.4. Um, and in the top of the page, we actually have our uh, root safety and our flank safety right here. So load spectrums, very powerful. Pay attention to what you're doing. Make sure you have the right uh, loadings on your uh, load spectrums. And again, always try and bench test or uh, compare your results with what you see in the field or an application. It's going to help you calibrate your model. I'm Ty Warner with KISSOFT. If you have any questions, please email me, ty.warner at kisssoft.com. If you're interested in a test license, go to www.kisssoft.com, request a test license, and uh, we can set you up with that with a full license that you can evaluate. Hope you've uh, enjoyed watching this. Thanks for watching.